Yeah. But Andrea, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you to get for some reaction to uh, that breaking story out of uh, State College, Pennsylvania. Good afternoon. Hey, Paul. What a way to use leverage to your advantage. Am I right here? Because, yes, he was listed as the front runner for a lot of the jobs, and I know that Penn State hit a rough patch, but his name has come up over the last several years for some of the big coaching jobs that have been open. And so for Penn State to make this type of commitment right now to him indicates to me that they believe in what he's doing and they knew that there would continue to be suitors for him and they wanted to be able to lock him down so that they didn't have to deal with these types of rumors and speculation year after year. And Andrea, I think sometimes we in the media get hung up on, well, what did you do last week? Uh, you tell us, uh, do athletic directors pay as much attention to that as we do? Sometimes they do, and we will probably talk about that in a few minutes. <laughs> We're getting ready to, a, yes. another job. <laughs> Uh, but in this case, no, because of the way he has uh, brought Penn State to a place where they are stable after what happened at the end of the uh, Joe Paterno era. Uh, and they are in position to at least compete uh, in their division in the Big Ten. Now, obviously, we all know who the big dog is on that side of it, and it's tough sledding when you have to go up against Ohio State and Michigan every single year. But Penn State has been better than Michigan uh, since James Franklin has been there. So for me, it's not really about what's happened in a couple of games this year. It's about the culture he's established and the way he's brought credibility and stability back to that program because of the way things ended under Joe Pop. Talking to Andrew Adelson, uh, the, the, the big game this week, Florida, Florida State, we thought maybe uh, it would determine – Dan Mullen's future, but uh, it didn't even do that, uh, Andrea. I know you live down there and follow those schools very, very closely. Let's talk about uh, the situation at Florida first and your reaction, and, and where do you think this all leads? Well, I was scheduled, and I still am scheduled, to go to the Florida State-Florida game thinking it could be Dan Mullen's last game. And I did not think that – Scott Strickland would um, make this decision before the season ended. I really thought that he would wait to see how it played out. But it got so toxic around the program in terms of the fans and the boosters who are sick and tired of not just watching the product on the football field struggle, but the way Dan handled himself in the media, the way he carried himself, the way he represented Florida – that I don't think Scott Strickland had a choice ultimately, but to make this decision without the final game being played. Where does this all lead is a great question. And I have to think that Scott already has his favored candidate list because it's not as if he woke up on Sunday and was like, I'm going to make a coaching change. Uh, it has been five straight weeks of poor performances and growing anger uh, in Gainesville and around the state about what was happening with this program. And I think people have talked about uh, the Stoops brothers and Bob and whether he'd be a candidate. I'm not so sure Bob wants to get into it. Uh, Mark has obviously done a terrific job uh, at Kentucky, but, you know, there's another name. I just talked about leverage with James Franklin. Billy Napier has played this entire situation for himself really well because now he's probably going to have three suitors coming after him, LSU, Virginia Tech, and Florida, uh, for his services. And he has coached under uh, some big-name coaches uh, like Nick Saban and Davo Sweeney who believe in him. He's obviously done a tremendous job where he's been. He's got the recruiting chops and uh, the offensive capabilities to get this job done. But it's a big job, Paul. And there are a lot of check boxes that have to be made uh, for this hire to go as smoothly as it needs to be. I don't know if he is the answer, but I won't be surprised if that's who Florida goes after. Yeah, at this hour, it does seem like Billy Napier. Well, not it, it seemed like from the moment Dan Mullen was fired that Billy Napier was the guy. And and the reason why I think it's important what you said, Andrea, this 
This is not going to be a three-week coaching search. Uh, I firmly believe, and I'm curious what you think, there'll be a coach in there by this time next week. You can't waste, you can't wait any longer. Uh, you have to get a coach in there at the top of the week because recruiting is chiseled down to about two weeks at that point. No doubt. And that is why I know Scott Strickland feels a sense of urgency also for himself, Paul, because he's under an inordinate amount of pressure to get this hire right. Um, he mishandled the situation with the women's basketball program there, and he's still dealing with the fallout from that. He still has angry players who are currently on that team. He hired Dan Mullen, and now he has to go and find a football coach after, by, by the way, giving Dan Mullen an extension in June, even though there were a lot of people who were unhappy with Dan Mullen at that time. And we all know how important recruiting is, especially right now. Florida is struggling, don't even have a top 25 class. Kirby Smart is just wiping the floor with Florida. So that's why there is this sense of urgency to get this hire in as soon as possible to try and salvage what they can on this early signing date to get in a recruiting class uh, to try and repair some of the damage that has been done uh, on the recruiting trail here over the last couple of years. Uh, that has to be the number one priority. Somebody who can recruit the state of Florida and who can be better than Kirby Smart at recruiting. Now, is Billy Napier better than Kirby Smart at recruiting? Well, that remains to be seen. But he's got to be in the same ballpark. And Dan Mullen simply was not. And neither were the coaches on that staff. Uh, and it's unbelievable to me, really, Paul, when you consider where Florida is as a program, where it's located in the state of Florida, that they're struggling this badly to get players to want to play for them. It's not just Georgia. Florida State is beating them right now in the state of Florida, a program that has had how many straight losing seasons? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.